welcome to the Golden News Shower. This week, a special interview with the founder of Happy Socks. What do you think of Sweden going cashless? Oh, I don't know. I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. All right, it's like making it, make it easier. And I think with everyone being on their phones and whatever, you just make it easy. Start paying with your phones, doing other things with yeah. it. Yeah, so it's great. Like it's not good for strippers. No, okay, that's true. And maybe. homeless because they want cash. That's true, but then yeah. Carol. Carol, cash for them. That'll mm-hmm. be. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But how come Happy Socks make so much money? Like you keep flying everywhere. I mean, all we're... over the place. Like. <laughs> We're making good, of course, but, but yeah. because we're, we're now in 90 countries and it's, it's, it's yeah. become a big business and it's fun mm-hmm. that it is. That was also why we started. We, we thought yeah. there was a gap in the market. It's like the only boutique store I can go to in Covent Garden and buy oh, anything. Please, 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 join in, come in. And buy anything for like eight pounds. Like yeah. All the other shops in Covent Garden, I go in, I have to buy like a minimum of like... Yeah, I mean, that when we started, it was also the time of recession in 2008. Yeah. People wanted to shop. People didn't really have afford anything, but they want to go out to the store, and that eight eight pound whatever product was perfect. Yeah, and it still is. Yeah. And you like the face of the brand? They told you to have a beard and be funky, <laughs> like as opposed to the other ones. <laughs> no, no, me and it- me and Mickey are both. Uh, we we just wanted. We started this brand to do what we love: to travel, to have fun, and just you know, and not let them nerd. Sorry? He's more of a nerd. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. Well, t- l- uh, he's not here. So he's a nerd. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. No, but he's a great guy. He's one yeah. of my best, old best friends, and we, we started it together. And mm-hmm. the yin and the yang sort is that he's more business and I'm more creative. Mm-hmm. Well, you, um, so why not have a rule that everyone comes into the shop has yeah. to take off their shoes, and then you can shame them by the socks they no, have? No, no. I'm not about shaming. Oh, generally, just yeah. sho- shoeless. Shoeless. Shoeless parties. Yeah. <laughs> This week, we're not talking about news or Trump. We're going to have a rapper called Peltzman, who's known to perform in the Porn Awards in the UK. Baby, now we've been feeling ever closer. And I'm about to take your tears on my shoulder. I want to treat you how a man is supposed to. Stopping and dropping all these guys trying to reproach you. Hot. It's about pussy or about class? No, this is a, this is a song about an ex-girlfriend. Um, I just wrote, wrote it about her and that situation at the time when I first got with her. Like, there's, this, there's a lyric where it's like saying all your friends didn't approve of me, sort mm. of, in it. But then, like, after a while, they did. And she was a little bit older than me as well, so... And she fell for you against the advice of her peers? Yeah, she, she... Well, her friends were a bit wary because I was, like, 13 years younger than her. Oh, yeah. So she was quite a lot older than me. Like a MILF? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so, yeah. No, yeah. She wasn't a mother, though. No, she wasn't a mother. Oh, yeah. A mother? Uh, no, I mean, no, she was a mother, yeah. A mother. Yeah, yeah. She had a... At the time, I think her daughter was 12. Um, and her kids liked you? Like, the daughter liked, liked you? Yeah, they got on with me really. Yeah, got, she got on with me really well. Hmm. Yeah. That's my dream, to wake up at someone's house where she hosts me, and I play a father figure to her kids, and they have to learn stuff from me. Yeah, well, I'm, do- I'm doing it again now. I'm with, with another older woman. Um, Sugar Mama. She's, she's actually, she was a model. Done a bit of this and a bit of that. Uh, she was um, the first woman in the UK to be able to twerk her tits and her bum at the same time. Really? And she was in the sun for that. Like Jesus said, twerk the other cheek. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're going to write a new song about that experience, maybe? Um, there might be a song in the pipeline for that. Mm-hmm. I reckon so. Yeah. I'm working on a few bits and pieces right now. Maybe, yeah. Is there a macho element to being a rapper? I think you have to have a certain persona. I think you have to come across like you're tough because it's a dog-eat-dog industry and there's a lot of competition. So I think sometimes... It is in your lyrics, tough? Or like yeah, tough? Uh, in both ways. Yeah. Tough physically and tough lyrically. I mean, you've got to come across like you're not going to be messed with. Are you a feminist rapper? Well, I believe that uh, females and males are equal. Um, I believe females should have rights as much rights as men, so yeah, uh, yeah. Is there an issue with rap degrading women, or maybe it's part of the culture? Maybe yeah, women I don't think, care. I think there is uh, that issue with degrading because obviously a lot of rappers use the term. I can't say it, mm-hmm. but a, f- a female yeah. dog. Oh, yeah, that that term. Okay. Um, and I think that's that's wrong. I think you shouldn't do that in music. I think you should take that out of music and talk about the real stuff, the real life struggles, politics, mm-hmm. economy, yeah.